Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, you are the living light who transformed darkness into light. Through the blessings of this glorious Sunday, you make us worthy to praise you with all those who saw the radiant light of your resurrection. We worship and we thank you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and your children. <clears throat> Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the living one who by his death gave life to his creation. By his resurrection, he saved his church, gave joy to his flock, brought us back to his father and enriched us with the gifts of his Spirit. To the good one be glory and honor on this blessed Sunday and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. Holy begotten Son, you were born of the Father before all ages. And by your creative will, you separated light from darkness on this, the first day of the week. You fashioned all creation to honor Adam, the image of your majesty. We proclaim and we thank you and we celebrate proclaiming Blessed are you, for you appeared in the flesh on earth like us and lived among us. Blessed are you, for you were buried and counted among the dead, and you shined your light in the sadness of the tomb. Blessed are you, for you rose to life, giving good hope to all, and you filled the angels with radiance, and they appeared at your tomb like flashes of lightning. Now, O Christ, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to make us worthy to rejoice in the glory of your radiant resurrection. Breathe life into our departed, and make them worthy to stand at your right hand in your eternal light. 
that you have prepared for those who love you. With them we praise and we thank you for your graces, and we glorify you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. God began. Receive the fragrance of our incense and of our prayers, and may we become a sweet fragrance through our good works and actions. Hear our petitions and grant rest to our departed in your dwelling place of joy. O Lord, our God, to you be glory forever. Kadi shant haluhu kodi shant Shout with joy from the mountain, Sunday is a feast so great. Offer praise to the Lord God and with angels celebrate. A reading from the second letter of Saint Paul to the Corinthian. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and your children forever. Are we beginning to commend ourselves again? 
or do we need, as some do, letters of recommendation to you or from you? You are our letter, written on our hearts, known and read by all. Shown to be a letter of Christ administered by us, written not in ink, but by the spirit of the living God, and not on tablets of stone, but upon tablets that are the hearts of flesh. Such confidence do we have through Christ toward God. So not that of ourselves we are qualified to take credit for anything as coming from us, but rather our qualification comes from God, who has indeed qualified us as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit, for the letter brings death, but the spirit gives life. Praise be to God always. We offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. <clears throat> From the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Saint Luke, who proclaimed life unto the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. <clears throat> the evangelist Luke writes, After this, the Lord appointed 72 others, whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and, he played, and place that he intended to visit. And he said to them, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I send you as lambs among wolves. Carry no money, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a son of peace that dwells therein, your peace shall rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the laborer is worthy of his hire. And do not move about from one house to another. 
This is the truth, peace be with you. And do not move about from house to house. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. You know, it's been actually a number of generations now where we think of religion like we do about shoe styles. Some people like Oxfords, some people like Birkenstock sandals, some people wear high heels, some people are in tennis shoes. Well, almost everybody's in tennis shoes. And some people are barefoot. And it's presented, religion's presented in a way like it's just your personal taste, whatever, whatever floats your boat. And for the same reason, you're not supposed to make fun of someone's shoe style because it's their taste. It's just what they like. You just, if you can't compliment them because they're really ugly, you just your mom told you, don't say anything. Same thing about religion. You don't talk about it in public. It's not something that's actually brought up. Now, what's amazing about this is this has nothing to do with Christianity. This has never been the idea of Christianity. And this is a text in the gospel today that really shows the mind of our Lord. So in other words, that idea about the privacy, about religion, about personal tastes, or of no religion at all, you just want to walk around barefoot, this first has to come, in theory, from outside Christianity, because it's not something that our Lord actually taught. And so when we look at the text today, this is the 10th chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke. There's no bulletins this week because I've been gone all week, so I just came back last night. <clears throat> but we have our annual conventions, and it's always nice to see all the Maronites from all around the country, and especially the priests, because the priests will always be there. People come and go, but the priests are always there. So we spend a lot of weeks, we spend a lot of days, see? I already lose something here. You spend the whole, you spend the whole week with lots of hugs and kisses and seeing everybody. And so it's uh, energetic and exhausting. So in the design, this idea of this personal aspect of religion, this gospel of St. Luke in chapter 10 really kind of should remedy us of that idea. At the end of chapter nine, there are a few individuals who come up to our Lord and say, I want to be a disciple. I want to learn from you, Rabbi. And the first thing our Lord says to the first individual is, well, you can come, but know that the foxes have their own lairs, the rabbits have their places to go, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay, ahead, to lay his head. So in other words, if you want to come and learn from me, you're learning from me because it's true not because you're going to get something from it. Another man comes up to our Lord and he says, I want to be your disciple, but my father's just died and I have to go back and take care of all the funeral ceremonies. And our Lord says, let the dead bury the dead. In other words, if you desire to be engaged to follow me in the gospel and to learn from me, everything else is secondary, even the personal relations. It's quite an extraordinary text. And when a third individual comes up to our Lord and says, I want to learn from you, I want to follow you, I want to learn from you, Rabbi, but I have to go back and take care of my house and get things arranged before I do so. And our Lord says to him, anyone who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is unworthy of the kingdom of God. If you're engaged, you're engaged now, start moving. So our Lord makes it very clear to these individuals the absoluteness that the gospel requires of us. Remember another place in the text, he will say, he who loves father, mother, brother, sister more than me is unworthy of me. The gospel actually burns. It's not a shoe style. 
that you can just pick and choose. Our Lord makes it very clear. This is God on the face of the earth, and God came to teach and to bring us life. But if you're piddling around doing other things, you're not going to be able to live because you're worried about your marbles or the Tonka trucks in the sandbox. And therefore, he says, they're unworthy. You put your hand to the plow, you start furrowing the fields, and then you start turning around, you're going to screw all of that up, and you're unworthy of the kingdom of God. That's why at this point in the gospel today, it begins by saying, and after this, he chooses 72 disciples and sends them out two by twos. Now, we've seen a text like this, but from St. Matthew, the parallel text a few weeks ago, where our Lord sends them out to prepare everyone that before our Lord arrives in their town, their village, their synagogue. And he sends them out and he gives them these series of directives. The first one being, I'm sending you out like lambs among the wolves. So prepare to be eaten. There is an aspect to this also, what our Lord is doing is obviously preparing the foundation of the kingdom. This is the gospel. This is now at an institutional level. The portrayal of that Christianity or the church is somehow an invisible reality that just happens to have men stuck to it. And so you can just kind of like, well, you know, those priests, those bishops, those, that pope, whatever, they're all kind of like peripheral and it's all human. It's like, no, no, no. Our Lord chooses the men to go out to prepare for him to be present. And the severity of it is followed. So the same way, if you see at the end of chapter nine about the individuals coming, our Lord says the individual has to be engaged body, heart, and soul completely. No other things, no other relations in the way. After this gospel, the, the lines that follow immediately the gospel today, our Lord says, and if these towns do not accept you, so now we're talking in a public re reality. Just the section before is about the individual's engagement. Now we talk about the public social aspect of receiving the disciples of our Lord. And he says, if those towns do not receive you, you go out of the town and you take off your sandals and you take your shoes and you shake the very dust from their streets off to rejection. Then our Lord goes on with all the woes of the towns. Woe to Chorazin, woe to Bethsaida, woe to all of these villages and cities around the Sea of Galilee who have rejected the message. Woe to them. You are on your path to damnation. On the day of judgment, it will be better for the people of Sodom and Gomorrah than it will be for you, people of Chorazin. So you have an individual engagement with the gospel at the end of chapter 9, and you have the public and social engagement with the gospel following the text that we're reading today. The gospel is meant to engage all of the human race in all of their relationships and all of their individual uh, engagement, their social relationships, their family relationships, their economic relationships, what we would call today their political relationships. All of these things are meant to be engaged within the light of the gospel. And when it's not, woe be to you. Because this will be death and this will be damnation. So read this chapter 9 and chapter 10 of St. Luke. It's very clear. Religion is not a personal affair. It is a personal affair, but it is not merely a personal affair. Your families are to be transformed by the gospel. Your working relationships with your colleagues is to be transformed. Education is to be transformed by the gospel. And this, of course, we know historically was done. These are the texts in the gospel that give you the historical basis of this teaching that show you this. Of course, they're just recording what we live, the reality coming from Pentecost. So, so now you understand the text better. When our Lord says, I send you as lambs among wolves, the world doesn't want you. The world doesn't want to hear you. The world's reaction to you was to reduce religion to shoe style. And then you can deal with it because it's unimportant. 
They're more concerned about the cosmetics on your face than they are the shoes on your feet, because you see the one more readily. The world will accept that, but it won't accept anything else. Anything that moves beyond that level. So the disciples that are sent out, our Lord are saying, what you are doing is establishing the kingdom of God. This is visible, this is institutional, this is a reality, and this is the Lord Jesus. What is the reality of the 72 disciples doing except preparing the way of the presence of our Lord? It is why from the very beginning, the teaching in the Catholic Church has been that the church is Christ. There's no distinction between some kind of reality called the church and then a human institution on the earth. It's the same reality. But the same way that the same Lord God could be crucified and put to death on Calvary, so you can bloody up the church of God pretty well. And so I send you as lambs among wolves. Then he has this whole series. Don't take your wallet with you. You don't need to have a whole series of credit cards. Don't worry about a second set of clothes. He gives all of these things and don't greet anyone along the way. Now, you have to come from a Mediterranean background to understand what that really means. Because the greeting is going to be, your greeting, how have you been? What happened to your daughter last month? Oh, tell me about the cousin that's right. And your sister, she had surgery last month. This greeting is going to last an hour. The idea of what the disciples are doing is you are focused entirely, singularly, what we call in the Syriac, the hidoyuto, the singularity of vision. You're not to be deflected in anything, not in greetings, not in worrying about your finances, not worrying about your second set or what you need on your roller bag or your suitcases, just go. And you announce to them that the kingdom of God is near, is at hand. That's the text that follows just after what we had read today. That's the idea of the singularity of vision. And when you arrive at the homes, you say to them, peace be to this house. This is the barakot that we've talked often about these last weeks. The blessings, the blessings that are given, are they are in themselves fruitful. God says, let there be light and creation exists. This word, peace be to the house, to this house. Our Lord, though, says it needs to have a response. In the barakot, we stand before the Lord God. He blesses and by blessing, he creates. And we receive that word and we return that word to him in praise and in blessing. The center of our religion is Eucharist. That's what Eucharist is translating is baraka. Thanksgiving, you respond of what is creative. This is the aspect then of the institution and the reality of the kingdom of God being established is you wish peace to this household. And if the one in the house, if the householder is a son of peace, then your peace will remain upon that family. But if not, that peace will return to you. Now, that's an indication of our lives, period. When grace comes to us and we're busy dinkering around with shoes and tonka trucks and marbles and we're not really concerned about the voice of God, God's blessings return to him and we're left desolate and naked. This is an indication of this. This is why in the larger scenario outside of just the family, in the larger scenario, he says, if the village doesn't receive you, then you go outside and you shake the very dust and leave it to them. And then he says, you enter into this house and you, because you are focused on one thing, which is the gospel, you don't worry about what they're feeding you. Just eat what they put down in front of you. It always reminds me of when I was studying at the seminary in the congregation that I belonged to. It was in the rule explicitly that the seminarian will learn to eat everything that is placed in front of him. No picking on the table. You eat the vegetables that are put out, you eat the meat that's put out, you put whatever is put on the table, you're to eat. Now, we used to do this with everybody. This is how all children used to be taught. But instead, we usually teach them one of the five forms of gluttony, which is to be too picky. There are five forms of gluttony, not just too much. That's one. Everyone knows that one. But being picky, that's one of them. 
So the little child who doesn't say they don't like tomatoes or carrots, but they've never had carrots at that point, you know, you know the routine. And our Lord is saying here, not because you're learning not to be picky, but it's because you are so focused on the kingdom of God and preaching this message, you eat what is given to you, let them take care of you because the laborer is worthy of his hire. They owe this to you, to feed you and to house you because you are bringing them life and salvation. It's a magnificent text, but he says, you remain rooted. You have one purpose to go, which is to preach the gospel. So do not move around from house to house. Now you understand hopefully why I started with that rather obscure text and do not move around from house to house. He's telling them because everyone likes flitting around. We like little social gatherings. We like doing these things. You, you come to this house. This is a family of peace. You remain in this house. This is your base to work. The kingdom of God is at hand. Don't worry about whether they have Netflix or not. Don't worry about what their fridge is stocked with. You have one thing and one thing only in the ihi doyuto, and that's the singularity of vision, so don't be moving around. None of it's an extra concern. You preach the kingdom. The kingdom of God is at hand, meaning the day of judgment is at hand. So this is a beautiful text, but it reminds us individually as we sit here of the depth of what it means to be Catholic, of the depth of what it means to be a disciple of Christ, and the really life-changing transformation that it is meant to be individually, socially, and all the rest of it that I've spoken of. Our Lord doesn't play games with the gospel. He is profoundly serious as to what this message is meant to be. Remember, lambs and wolves, lambs and wolves, you will be eaten up. The world doesn't want this message. Some individuals respond, the children of peace, and they enter into the light. This is the vision of the preaching of the gospel. It's laid out for us in the text themselves. It is focused, it is profound, it is rooted, and it is serious. It is a question of damnation, of life and death. Life, life beyond any extraordinary aspect because it is a participation in the very nature of God. We could never render. For all eternity, we will not be able to render gratitude to God for what he has offered us. But because it's serious, the other alternative is damnation. And this is why we remain focused. Why in the ihi doyuto, the singularity of vision, we lead our lives this manner, we change everything. And you can be guaranteed that if you live this way, your children will be Catholics for the rest of their lives because they will understand the seriousness and the identity of being a disciple of Christ. No, they'll bounce around like anyone. We sin, we do stupid things, but the ground, the fundament, the foundation is the kingdom of God. So I encourage you to read chapters nine and chapter 10 of St. Luke. And to receive this, we ask for the grace this day, truly of this profound apostolic vision. Because this is not just the question about the priests and the nuns. This is a question about all of you. This is a question of the disciples who are sent out to do this labor. And by the very fact that we are baptized and living in the Catholic Church, we have that same seriousness to bring the gospel also to others. And so we ask the Lord God to illuminate our hearts and to give us an encouragement of the strength that by persevering, we have much to give, not because of us, but because of the message that we have received in that blessing of peace and from that blessing of peace to be able to communicate this life also to others. As long as we see it as being a singular vision and not a choice of footwear. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.
We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God the God, and the Lord, true God and true God, begotten Son of God, God's Son of God, the name of all things great. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was in time to do it. He came down. For our Savior, he was to die and not to die. He sat in death from the spirit, and he rose again from the spirit of the day, and he rose from the spirit. He sent me to heaven, and see that I have been to God. He will come and give me glory. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who will see the Father and the Son, who will the Father and the Son to the Lord and the Lord of life, who will the Son to the cross. We believe in one who will be Catholic and every spell of the church. We confess our majesty and we will forward to the Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now receive these offerings that your children have brought to you, out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. <coughs> As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint Pancras. Be mindful, O God, of the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom the sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Be mindful also of all those who share with us today in this offering. <coughs>
görüyoruz. Alleluya. Continue with the anaphora of Saint John the Evangelist, the Apostle on page 815, 815. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God and Father, hope you are true in love, security that is ever sure, and hope that never fails. Grant love, happiness, and everlasting peace to your children here before you. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with pure hearts and souls, and with the holy kiss worthy of your blessed name, that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O servant of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. O oh Lord, as we bow before your majesty, send us your grace and glorious blessings from the heights of your heavenly sanctuary, that we may glorify you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. <coughs> o oh Lord, you sent your beloved Son at the appointed time for our salvation. He gave us these holy and life-giving mysteries. Do not look upon us as strangers, and do not turn your holy face away from us because of our many sins. For you alone are the Holy One with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God, the Father, and the grace of the only begotten Son, on the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And your Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. <coughs> It is right and just to praise you, O Lord of all in heaven and on earth. The powers on high in the heavens where they dwell glorify you. The fiery ranks exalt you, the cherubim bless you, and the seraphim worship you. They cry out and they proclaim. Our salvation was such a son into the world, and descended, became flesh, suffered, was crucified for us, who had distorted his image. Kuri eleison, webiyamo haudotun fashoni le ma bedfaye, 
انصار لحم بیدا قوری شم تو و بارخ و قادرشم و به تمیدا کارمار سابا خول مهنه کل خون خون و دنی تا فخر و دیل رحل و فایکون و احل و ساگیه می تقسی و می تهیم حسون حامی و حوی در قلم علمین Amin. Oh, Dakhlo faikun wakhlab saagiye Tain shadu meti hibran Ukhto yun haume wa haoye dan qaylam alameen Aameen Do this in memory of me for well, whenever you eat this body and drink this blood, you proclaim my death until I come again. Christ our God, we remember your plan of salvation and we implore your goodness. When you come in glory with your holy angels and all await the reward they deserve. And when you place the sheep to the right and the goats to the left, do not look upon us as strangers to your household and do not turn your holy face away from us. Do not let our sins and offenses pierce your holy heart, and do not separate us from you. For we have professed your holy name, and have proclaimed your divinity. Rather treat us according to your promises, forgive our sins, pardon us, and have mercy upon your inheritance. For this your repentant church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. Sing the promise that upon these offerings the living grace will be the giver of life. With his soul's holiness, who spoke through the prophets and who crowned the holy apostles and martyrs, may he descend upon these mysteries and sanctify them. <coughs> Manin Murio, Manin Murio, Manin Murio, Nitemor of Ohio, Kodisho, when the hand the line of a look or no, no, no. May these holy mysteries sanctify the bodies and souls of those who share in them. 
Cleanse their hearts, purify their thoughts, and be a pledge of the heavenly kingdom and new life forever. Amen. O Lord, we now remember in this sacrifice all the holy churches and the shepherds of the true faith, especially Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bishara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the bishops. With them, we remember the priests, the deacons, and all who serve your church. We pray to you, O Lord. For the peace and stability of the whole world, for a blessed and prosperous year, for an abundant harvest, for the sick and the oppressed, for all who call upon your holy name on land, at sea, or in the air, and who profess that you are the true God. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, those who have presented the offering upon this altar, and those who desired to do so but were unable, and grant them their petitions. We pray to you, O Lord. We remember all the saints, the fathers, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors. Mary, the mother of God, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Pancras, and all the righteous and the just. Through their prayers, make us worthy to stand among them. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, in your grace, those who have left us and have gone to you from the first Christian disciples to this day. They were signed with the seal of baptism and received the precious body and blood of your Son. They wait for you in your life-giving hope. Raise them up on the last day and in your mercy forgive all their sins. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin. We hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. O Lord, you are the pleasing oblation who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest who offered yourself as the Lamb. Through your mercy, may our prayer rise like incense which we offer to your Father, to you, to you, the glory for heaven. O God the Father, you accept prayers and you answer petitions. You taught us through your beloved Son to stand before you and to call upon you with pure souls and with clear consciences praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of God. Amen. Deliver us, O Lord, from every temptation and from harm of evil. For you have power over all, and we raise glory to you now and forever. Shlomo Elukulufunna. O Lord, in your grace and abundant mercy, bless those who bow before you. Make us worthy to share in your life giving mysteries and to join the assembly of your saints, that with them, we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Amen. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. To him be glory and Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for a new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory. your body to eat and your living blood to drink, O lover of all people, have mercy on us.
Gracious God and Father, how can we repay you for your goodness and for the salvation you have just given us? Who can give you the glory you truly deserve? In our weakness and insofar as we are able, we worship, praise, and thank you, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Shlomo Elokurchunna. Jesus Christ, our God, we worship, thank, and praise you. We implore your goodness and abundant mercy for the salvation of the whole world, for the protection of the living and eternal rest to the departed, for the feeding of the hungry and the support of the needy, for the visiting of the sick and the consolation of the grieving. Through your grace dwell in them, and by your abundant mercy give them life. By your cross, bless your people and protect your inheritance. Adoration is due to you, to your Father and to your Holy, holy and life-giving Spirit, now and forever. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Thank you.